females, so let's do this gal and let's give her Sally. No, Sandra. Sandra. She looks like a Sandra. Let's do it. Find security pass, mainland. We're gonna look at the security pass, which looks like this. Come on in, Skipper. Follow me. Luckily, a guy isn't, isn't the sociable type, so I can take my thoughts out with distracting abstraction while we whiz along the forest path. It looks all so lush and green. Boss is in there. Glad to have you on board, Sandra. Shall we just go through? Shall we go? Just go through a few formalities and call it a day. That way you can get some rest before you start. Blah blah blah. Same shit. Sounds good to me, sir. So first we have. Uh, shall we have a little refreshment? I'm just gonna say I'm not thirsty. Nothing for me, thanks. I'm not thirsty. You'd be wise to keep hydrated. That's none of my business. I'm not your dad. Um, okay. The rest of the day is taken up with procedural stuff. Professor Proper showing me around the island. Personally, it was nice to get to know him a little bit. He's rather eccentric, but in a nice way. The thing is, the thing that sounds out most is my catalog. Da -da 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 -da. I got a catalog. I need to keep it safe. As I'm selling my tent. Makes government my really catches my attention. It's a notebook that was obviously written by my predecessor. And the predecessor before him or her and their predecessor all predecessor and the predecessor before the predecessor and it, it goes on and on and on. I've left it they've left it under my bed, which is a good invitation to read it, as far as I'm concerned. I think maybe the first draft of a novel. And it's not bad either. It's really a vivid imagination. There was all stories about cocking cats and island anomalies. It was obviously very, they were obviously very inspired by their surroundings. I must say, it's a great read. Imagine if it were true. <laughs> I laugh at my little fantasy and snuggle down from my first sleep on Cat Island. Sometime in the middle of the night, I'm woken by an intruder. there okay yep notebook got stolen running through the forest barefoot chasing a cat wave of nausea rises up in me realizing I'm becoming perilously close to the danger zone and we pass out again why is a calico cat staying in front of me drops the notebook from the top I pass out they all are. Laying in the sand surrounded by cats looking down on me. Yeah, pass us a live one. Move back, child. Yes, yeah, I'm breathing. Brain begins to defuzz. I realize I wasn't reading about the... Uh, this is what I was reading about in the novel. Only it wasn't a novel at all. My stomach tightens in a knot. It was a journal. Focus my eyes and pick out the big marmalade cat. Have I been bitten? Well, of course you've been bitten. How else would you be able to hear us? This one's an idiot. Don't be rude. Calico Cat turns to me. You know about being bitten? You read the journal? Most of it. Enough to understand what's happening here, Car? Enough to know we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. So, one of, this, one of these times I want to say I don't want to help the kitties, but this isn't going to be that time. So we're going to help the kitties. No, no, there is no choice. We have to help each other. Bravo, Kara. So, let's get to the chase. We've already done the, cha the, the chase bit. Hush now. 
What do you need to know, human? Still a uh, uh, bit of dazed and in shock. Uh, everything, really. The moment the catalog starts beeping, he needs to get back to camp. Start my first day at work. I have to go. I'm get myself together and we can catch up later. I have a feeling you're going to do very well, Carl. They all say that. The best one yet. Um, we'll see. We will see. Let's go to the lab. It didn't work. And the catalog beeps. We're going to get like a flash of the bullshit and not be able to read it. Something about a ship. What? I don't even know. It's just about... I had just about enough mysterious mystery as a person can handle for one day. If you want to be anonymous, I shall take it. And it, you also don't mind being ignored. Ooh. Well then. She's always working on Ram Ram Lab when I arrive. I'm not late, so there's no fuss. I get through the day efficiently as possible. I head back to my tent for work. After work is done, I'm going to get to grips with finding out what I can. Let's figure out who we're going to romance. Trixie or Kibbles? I think it's going to be Kibbles. Meow. <coughs> Meow. I'm out in the forest, looking for some shade and a place where I won't be disturbed. I need to be relaxed when I finally read the precious contents of the envelope I'm carrying. Feels like I've been waiting an age for this moment. Eventually, I find a clearing with a moss-covered tree stump that looks comfortable enough. I have a quick check around the satisf and to satisfy myself that I'm alone before I take a seat and slowly unpeel the flap of the brown, brown wrapper and pull out. My issue of Kanashi Boy. It's such a treat to get some quiet manga reading time for my to myself. Yay! She's a nerd. I love it. I'm just starting to get it, starting to get into it when I hear a rustling sound coming from a nearby bush. It's not some sort of sound the wind makes when it ruffles the leaves. It's more deliberate than that. Than that. I look go towards the bush and the noise stops abruptly. Almost as soon as I resume reading, it starts again. I try to ignore it and continue with my comic. But it's very intrusive. I feel I'm being watched. Who's there? The rustling gets louder. Hello? I inch my way towards the source of the sound, nervously holding my breath. I reach out my arm to pull aside the branches when something bursts out of the bush and knocks me sideways. Kibbles, what on earth are you doing? Were you spying on me? He picks himself up from the ground, desperately trying to style it out. Oh, you're here? I hadn't noticed. I was just looking for something. In a bush? Yeah, I left my... Kibbles looks around frantically for something. He locks eyes on an unremarkable looking flat pebble and picks it up triumphantly. My pebble! I left my pebble in this bush. Found it now. Good, I'd hate to think that would happen if you lost that. Yeah. Anyway, what are you doing? Um, reading? I hold up the comic book, em emphasizing, there are your words, emphasizing the obvious. Yeah, thought so. You're very observant, Kibbles. So, is that Kanashi boy? What? I'm taken aback. Yes, actually it is. Do you know it? And more to the point, how do you know it? Yeah. Looks like issue 8. That's right. Now I'm impressed as well as amazed. Kibbles, how on earth do you know? Questions are flooding my brain. But I know I need to play this cool. I don't want him shutting me out. That's an old issue. Looks like he has no intention of answering my questions. So I try a different tack. I'm a little behind, so I thought I bought... So I brought a couple... Of back issues with me to bring me up to date. So which version are you reading? Version? I'm not sure. Ah, it's probably the inferior American translation. 
You really have to get the original Japanese or the European versions to get all the nuance. Oh, he's one of those. He's one of those manga lovers. One of those guys. Oh, it's impossible to truly understand the depth of Fumiyoshi and Hara's relationship in the version you've got. You're a proper fan then? Yeah, he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys. Damn it. Could say that, I guess. <laughs> he's the writer. I'd love to pick your brain sometime. What do you want to know? Does the original version explain how they are able to enter the third chamber together? When Chisato gets turned into a hog? Oh. Oh yeah, that's because she tried to pass through the gate without Asayo's approval. Oh right, that would make sense. That bit was cut for some reason. The American version they're selling these days is plebeian trash. Damn! Well, I like it. Any serious Kanashi Boy fan would track down the European translation. Hmm, I'm not sure, but I don't think I'd be able to get those delivered here. I guess I have to make do with the trash version. <laughs> I'd rather read something else than read that inferior, ra inferior rag. Fair enough, but I'm still enjoying this. I start to go back to reading my trash, but Kibble suddenly springs forward, grabbing, grabs the comic out of my hands, and runs the, off into the undergrowth. You little fucker. How dare. Hey, Kibbles, bring that back. But he's gone. I wait for a while, not quite believing what he just did. After a few minutes, I lose hope and he'll return. Start packing away my things and head back to camp. Just as I was starting to walk away, Kibbles comes crashing back through the bush. Oh, there you are. What was all that about? I got you something. That's when I noticed he's holding a copy of Kanashi Boy issue 8, but it's not my copy. This one is the pristine plastic cover. Look, looks new. Here, this is my copy. The Euro European translation? Original Japanese, actually. Wow! But how do you understand it? Don't tell me you speak Japanese. Some, look, I made my own translation. There are pieces of paper tucked in between the pages with scrawled writings on them. How did you manage that? One of the ones before you, she helped me translate it. One of the ones before me? What does that mean? The previous assistant? Want to read this or not? I'm far more interested in what he just said. You said, helps. Kibbles is looking at the cover of Kanashi Boy, but I sense he's pretending to be preoccupied. He's clearly, he's clearly said more than he's intended to, and now he's distancing himself from it. Hmm? That would suggest they're still here. Where does the circle end? <laughs> Where does the circle end? Huh? I'm annoyed that he's obviously trying to change the subject. It's a simple question, human. I'm worried that if I push him too far, he'll disappear into the bushes, so I decided to play along for now. Where does the circle end? He's watching me intently, and I get the feeling this is some kind of test. Um, the circle ends where it began, probably. Kibbles looks delighted. Oh cool, you've read it. Read what? Sakuru. I'm sorry, I didn't know that one. But you gave the right answer. I have no idea what you're talking about now. Sakuru by Haishi Kitsuki. You haven't read it? Afraid not. Is it good? Only the best in its genre. Which is... Guro, naturally. And Guro means... Gore, of course. Of course. I wasn't aware that Gore was a, was a whole genre. I realize I'm a bit out of my depth here. I can lend it to you. I have a copy here. They're both... Manga nerds, and it's so fucking cute. I love it. Kibbles looks like he's about to die, uh, dive back into the bushes. Whoa, hang on. Hang on a minute. That sounds really interesting, but I'm, I'm in the middle of Kanashi Boy. 
So ditch that and start this. You won't regret it. Uh, I'll read so Sakaru. Hmm, well, normally I wouldn't. I would finish the series I'm on before starting another. But you got me very interested in Sakaru, I must say. Wait, wait right there. He's gone before I can open my mouth. I'm, I'm starting to get used to this routine, so I wait patiently. He's back within seconds. That was quick. Where do you keep this stuff? I could tell you, but... Then you'd have to kill me? Whoa, slow down, JJ. That's a bit too soon to be finishing each other's sentences. JJ? Jesse James. McMurphy told me you're all about... Uh, McMurphy told me all about him. Fastest draw in the Wild West. Suddenly, he's leaping around and pretending paw, pretend, with pretend paw guns. Pew pewing. Until, until he's been shot. And acts an elaborate stagger fall death scenario. Then he's back on his feet in a heartbeat. Pointing at the, pointing at the comic he's placed in my hands. Yeah, it's universally agreed that it's the grossest manga out there. Kills grins as though that's a positive thing. I look at the glossy back cover and feel my interest peak. This doesn't look like the sort of thing I'd usually pick up at a comic shop, but I'm certainly intrigued. Great! You're gonna love the, the bit where Kiri's mom stabs her own eye out because- JESUS! Kibbles, spoilers! Oh, who cares about who cares about spoilers? I feel it feels totally different when you see it with the artwork. I don't want you to tell me any part of the story, Kibbles. It doesn't matter if it feels different. Okay, but just remember one thing. Kibbles, if this is a spoiler, I'll be very upset. The circle ends back where it began. Kibbles! I can't tell if that was an actual spoiler. But I still feel indigenous. Indigenous, yes. I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't feel I pronounced that right. He holds his paw up defensively. What? You said it yourself. That was a lucky guess. What does it mean, anyway? It's a secret password for Sakuru fans to help identify each other. The Mangaka made it up himself. Man mangaka? M manga? Manga? Mangaka? Kaka. Like the Mason secret handshake? Yeah, probably. You don't know what the Masons are, do you, Kibbles? It's like a boy band or something? Close enough. Should we make our own secret handshake? You know, in case someone tries to infiltrate our manga club. Good idea, Kibbles. We don't want anyone getting their mitts on our intelligence. Oh, yeah, that's what I, that's what I was thinking. So if you hold out your hand in a fist formation, and I do this, Kibbles has splayed his claws out as if he's going to scratch me, but pushes his metacarpal pad into my knuckles. It feels really strange. Meow. That's great, Kibbs. Really unique. Yeah, so uh, anyway... I've got a lot of stuff to be getting on with. Important business stuff. I'll have to catch you later, human. I feel a bit taken aback by his sudden change of mood. Oh, okay, Kibbles. I'll get on with this manga then. And we can discuss it soon. Yeah, sure. See ya. Sit down to tree snip and get stuck in my new comic when I hear... Fill your hands, you son of a gun! I look to see, I look up to see that Kibbles has crept around the far side of the trees to ambush me. I spring into action, falling to my knees behind the tree stump. You wouldn't shoot an arm, unarmed cowboy, would you? You yeller-bellied snake! He momentarily lowers his lowers his paws. What? I seize my opportunity. Pew pew, gotcha! I shoot my finger guns at him. Nah, nah, I dodged. Kibbles jumps into a roll and shoots his paw gun at me. No, you got me! Ugh, I can't believe this is how it ends. I grab my chest and stagger to the floor, doing a very good performance, if I do say so myself. That's what you get when you mess with the sass slinger. I dart my head up. The what? 
Oh, nothing. What did you just call yourself? I didn't say anything. The Sass Slinger? No, I don't know what you're talking about. You're boring me, human. I'm going now. No, I mean, that's really cool. I want a name too. Kibbles looks surprised. I get off the floor and dust myself down. How about the Sass Slinger and his sidekick, the, uh, Banter Bomb? The Banter Bomb? Yeah. That's really embarrassing. Okay, well, I'll think about it and get back to you, Kibbles. This has been so fun. See you later, Brats. Pants. He bows his imaginary gun smoke. Oh, he blows his imaginary gun smoke from each of his little paws and swaggers into the bush. So he's a mingle lover that likes also likes cowboys. That that's that's cool. I feel childishly happy. Well, that was an interesting romance. I'm sure we got some recon we can do. We do, look, eight. Got this focus on finding an antidote. It's time to run some tests on myself. See, why didn't they do that to begin with? I've been devoting all the time I can spare to working on an antidote for the catification process. Although it's not an entire failure, progress is slow, and I'm concerned that I may be running out of time. It's time I did more tests on myself to record how the virus is progressing in me and what effects it's having on my body. It should give me some idea of how much time I have left, before it becomes too difficult to hide the problem from other people. I'm sneaking around in the middle of the night because I can't risk getting found out by Professor Popper or the Marigolds. The only person likely to check on what I'm doing is at this hour is Zane, the security guard. And I'm confident he won't have a clue what any of this stuff means. I started by taking my own blood Never an easy thing, but trying to find but trying to find a vein when you're also trying not to look is very tricky indeed. It takes several missed stabs before I get it right. And I take as much as I dare without making myself feel woozy. I take saliva, saliva swabs from the inside of my mouth, inside my nostrils, and in my ears. I finally and finally from my groin area. What? Okay, that's that's a, a bit much. I still swab in his tube and label them 007. Corny. I know, but it makes me smile. 007. Bond. James Bond. I'm also pretty certain no one will pay much attention to the numbers. Everything is numbered around here, so you tend to go blind to any number that isn't particularly one you're looking for. Next, I tweeze out individual hairs from my head, eyebrows, arms, legs, and groin. Each hair is prepared and placed into a microsc microscope slide. Finally, I take the clipping from finger toenails and I prepare into... Not, not groin this time, huh? <laughs> prepare into slides. Some I put into test tubes for testing reactively to various agents. I'm quite sleepy by the time I've prepared all my, all my specimens. I'm starting to think maybe I should freeze this lot and call it a night when I hear something moving around outside. I go and poke my head out, but it's too dark to see anything. Hello? Nothing. Is somebody there? Do you want something? This place can be very creepy sometimes. A little diversion has made me feel much more alert. And with my second wind, I decide to press on with my testing. I work steadily for the next hour and a half before I can draw any conclusions, the short-term te uh, test results indicate that much, not much has changed from the last time I did this. Clearly, I'm not progressing fast enough, which is a relief. However, I can see some marked changes from before. Mostly these are based off the rate of cell growth and movement with the nail clippings and hair samples. Everything is growing more everything is growing more quickly. I'm a little disappointed not to have anything more informative, but I remind myself to be careful what I wish for. I place the long-term test at the at the back of the specimen fridge and I will check up on them in 24 hours. There's not much else I can do now. 
clear away the equipment I have used and leave the leave the place exactly the condition I found it in. This Marigold wouldn't suspect I'd been here. Oh, I'm just heading to my tent when I hear a noise coming from behind me. It's in, from inside the lab. I walk back f and call from outside. Who's in there? Silence. I uh, have security with me. I hear how ridiculous it sounds and curse myself for being idiotic. I walk into the lab, put the main line on, stun to see the tests I put in the fridge out on the lab table. I have no idea what to do, so I just put them back in the fridge, but this time I use the padlock on the fridge door. Nobody ever bothers with it. I've often wondered why it's even there. I don't want someone getting at my blood samples. I'm too freaked out to think straight now. I need to get in bed. Turn on, turn. I turn towards my tent and there's a huge dark outline of a man in my path. It's Zane. Evening. Evening. Working. Yep. Doing, secu doing security. Yep. Good night then. Good night. And he turn. And as he turns to walk away, I catch him say almost in a whisper. There's the monthly stockade of the fridge tomorrow morning. I turn to ask what he means, but he's already gone. I realize I'm being given a helping hand, so I go back to the fridge and get my samples. I'll take them to my tent and see if I can't grab some ice from the mess kitchen on the way. Aha! It's like he knows! Is he helping us? Okay. Okay, Recon 9. Today the marigolds are clearing out the lab's inventory. I should probably be there too. I might find something useful. I know my morning alarm is ringing, but I can barely lift my eyelids. I'm not sure if I'm looking for today or dreading it. I promised to go in two hours early to help with the monthly inventory and deep cleanse of the lab. It's not the work I'm anxious about, in fact, that I'm doing it with, it's the, but the fact that I'm doing it with a marigold. Is that underwear? Huh. They're an odd pair. They certainly don't say much, but I quite often feel that they're judging me. Oh well. The sooner I get there, the sooner it'll be over. As I approach the lab, I can hear the voices raised in stage-type whispers. They're obviously having a having a row that they don't want anyone else to hear. I don't. Yeah, no one's. I load around a few minutes to see if I can pick up uh, any tidbits that would be helpful. I'm not no nosy. I'm just curious. It's a cat, Mason. Okay, a cat. All it cares about is sleeping and eating. It's still a living thing, Mora. A living thing? It's a glor it's glorified vermin. Is what it is. You're putting you're putting us at risk. He isn't even the sort of he isn't the sort of person to mess with, Mason. Loyalty to the company is the number one priority in their eyes. I have been loyal. It's my uh, allegiance that's changed. It's my allegiance that's changing, not my loyalty. Do you know how ridiculous you sound? Allegiance to who? A bunch of cats? Mara? You know they're not just cats. You knew when we signed our contracts. Not fully. It's different. Anyway, it's different anyway. In real life, living with them, knowing them. Knowing them? You know what I mean. I know if you mess up, we'll be destitute at best. I feel I can't pull this off any longer. <clears throat> Good morning. Ah, you're here. I'm not late, am I? Not at all. We were just discussing how to proceed. They change. They exchange glances. You two can get on with the stock check. Leave the sanitation to me. Sounds good to me. Where do we begin, Miss Mer Mr. Marigold? Call me Mason. I have the list here, so I'll call the item and you tell me how many we have. 
Okay, Mason. And if I'm in your way, just let me know. Miss? Miss Marigold? Yes. I'll be sure to, but if we each mind our own business, well, I'm sure it'll work out fine, dear. The tension of the air is tangible. This could be for a very long two hours. We start off with the top shelf of the large metal cabinet. Standard test tubes. 20 boxes. Petri dish. 10 boxes. Mixed sizes. Beakers large. 25. Beakers medium. 20. Only 20? That's a bit low. Have we had more... Have we had more beakers than usual? I decided not to tell him that I sometimes use them as tea mugs. And there are at least three in my tent growing mold as we speak. Yes. We've all been a bit clumsy lately. I know one was knocked off the counter by McMurphy this week. Nothing but trouble, them cats. Uh, Mr. Marigold continues to stockpile as though he didn't hear his wife. We move on to the next shelf and then the next until we're almost finished with the entire inventory. We're coming to the end of the drugs cabinet. Drugs! Ketamine, 50 milligrams. Eight, oh, eight bottles. That can't be right. It says here that we're no our normal stock is 30. But we normally stock 30. See for yourself, two, four, six, eight. Do you, use a, do you use a lot of that then? No, on the contrary. It's mostly used for... Dennis... We rarely do that kind of surgery. Well, that's just... Well, that's a mystery. One of the cats is like addicted to it. I wonder what it could be used... I wonder what it could be being used for. You two will be a lot quicker if you stick, your, stick to your counting and leave the wondering up to the professor. We finish the rest of the job without any necessary ch unnecessary chat. We all seem to be deep in our own thoughts. Mine are about where that amount of ketamine might be disappearing to, and for what purpose. Suddenly I don't feel good. Huh. Professor Popper is an addict. He's just snorting it up. Oh, we need to rest. We got a lovely nap. I wake up feeling revitalized. Yep, magic. We'll do the do the romance. All right, Kibbles. The nerdy kitty. I've had a busy morning today, so I'm with re I'm rewarding myself with the longer lunch break. I use the extra time to return to what has become my favorite reading spot in the forest to finish Sakuru. 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 Kibble's right. It's fantastic. I'm enjoying it so much more than I expected to. I'm not usually a fan of manga that's excessively, excessively bloody. My tastes tend to be more benign. This was an exception. The gore was so relevant to the individual characters and the overarching story that I felt it entirely justified. I read the final page, close the issue, and ex exhale loudly. What an ending. I can hardly believe that the main character died. It's too sad, and yet completely authentic. I, could, I can't see how anyone could, anybody could escape a situation like that. Ooh. My thoughts are interrupted by the sound of rustling nearby. I open my eyes. Hey, Kibbles. Kibbles tumbles out of the bushes again. He's holding an adorable little satchel, which is shaped like a penguin. Hello, Sandra. Have you read Sekiru then? Yes, I just finished it now. It was so disturbing, but in the best possible way. Yeah, the body horror bits are epic. You want it back? And Kibble's a comic book. He examines it closely, clearly looking for any signs of damage or wear. After a while, he seems satisfied. He opens the satchel and carefully places it inside. At the time, he takes out three more comics and presents them to me. You should try these now. They're on another level. If you want to be taken seriously, you gotta read them. I struggle to understand who I should be trying to get to take me seriously. I give up. 
Okay, great. What do you have for me? First, this is Hakaroshi. It's about a kid who finds a puppet that lets him control his parents. Jesus! And this one's called Hungry Sparrow. The artwork is sick. There's this character called the Icebreaker. He's a huge polar bear. The last one is Hichi o Subo I can't... Subomi? It's probably my favorite. Oh wow! Hichi o Subomi. You've heard of it? I've read it! It's awesome, isn't it? Well... I actually couldn't stomach it, but... I know how Kibbles likes... I don't know how Kibbles will take that. No point in pretending, I'm not gonna lie. To be honest, it was a bit much for me. Kibble suddenly looks very serious. He reminds me of of my lectures in university when I answered a question wrong, but they didn't want to come right out and say it. Uh, say it was wrong. It was way... In what way much? I think it was a bit relentless, the gore. It's not relentless. It's integral. Really? I felt the scene where Kidra eats that slug was just gratuitous, totally the wrong place for something so gut turning. What? Kidra never eats a slug? You must be thinking of something else. No, it's right after Murma brings the fruit basket. She opens up the bana banana and a slug is inside. I remember the fruit basket, but no slug. He pulls a comic from his protective sleeve and starts looking through the pages. There's the fruit basket, and then it goes straight into the train scene. No slug, see? Oh, I see what the problem is. This is a shorter version. The slug scene must be in the extended edition. Oh, she got you! Extended edition version? Yes, I got it back at camp. I can lend it to you if you like. Swapsies! Kibbles looks upset for a moment, but quickly composes himself. Oh, well, I've heard the extended version is way too long. That's probably why I didn't enjoy it. you didn't enjoy it. The pacing is much better with the standard edition. You're probably right. You have better knowledge than on than me on this stuff. He looks super happy and prances around me a few seconds, catching imaginary insects. Okay, Kibbles. Can I st still borrow Hungry Sparrow and Hakurashi? He pulls himself together. Oh, so you haven't read those? Not yet. I've, hung I, I've heard Hungry Sparrow is excellent. I'll say nothing until you've read them. We can compare notes then. Kibbles hands me the comics and packs Kuchiyo Subome away. Thanks, Kibbles. I'll bring them back as soon as I'm finished reading them. See that you do. Kibbles disappears backwards in the bushes once again. Never eye breaking eye contact. Maybe he lives in that bush. Perhaps it's like... Perhaps it's like the TARDIS. Oh, references! <sighs> Research 2. Alright, let's tag some kitties. Here, kitty kitty. I'm out on a tag and scan rotation. The sun is beginning to set and the beach is cooler. This is hunting time, so in theory, more cats will be drawn out from their hidey holes. The other tagging, the other time for tagging is midday when they're at their laziest, but I find the heat too intense to come to this part of the island at that time. Something catches my eye and leads me into the forest. Oh, here, kitty. Just me. Oh, hi, Kibbles. How's it going? To find it. Oh, what's that thing? Kibbles is already eyeing my chipping pin. Looks like a weapon. Is it a weapon? No. Well, kind of. Do you want me to show you how it works? <clears throat> Kibbles gives me an exasperated look. How dumb do you think I am, human? Look. You'd be doing me a huge favor if you just let me use this thing on you. Oh yeah? Yes, I don't think I can actually tag you twice. And I need all the practice I can get. Well then, catch me if you can! 
I hear a yeah echo through the forest as Kibbles seems to disappear before my very eyes. Impressive. How did you do that, Kibbles? Come back. I won't shoot you, okay? I'll even let you have a go if you can show me how you disappeared so fast. He won't. He won't come back now. A new voice startles me. He's like the Scarlet Pumper, Pumperna, Pumperno, Pump, Pimperno. I've I've heard this word before, the Scarlet Pimperno. Okay. I turn to see a mid-sized brown-haired cat scratching at the trunk of the tree. No, oh, hello. I don't think we've met before. My name's. I know who you are, Turntail. The island is buzzing with news about you. Turntail? What does that mean? I realize I'm going to have the scanner. Kibbles leaps the door and pins the new cat to the floor. Meow! Shoot her! Yeah! Shoot her! Yeah! I oh uh sorry? This won't hurt. It's on for your own good. And so we can make sure you stay safe and healthy and I seize my opportunity and move fast! I've already grabbed the scruff of her neck, and before I finish speaking, I've pressed the pen between her shoulder blades and released the microchip. There, all done. Wasn't so bad, was it? Whoa, awesome! Can I shoot the next one? I doubt that, Kibbles. I wiggle my thumb his direction. Aw, oh, man. I gotta get me some of those. Can I get up now? I have things to do. Kibbles? He remains pinned by the... He remains pinned to the other cat. I reach for the spray bottle in my pocket, and he leaps away with a laugh. Off you go, then. Do your things. Anything I can help you with? No, just duties. Duties, duties, duties. Must get everything done. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to enter da uh, data for you in this catalog. How about we call you B? B? Because you're so busy. I knew that was going to happen. Busy B? Look, B. If it would be good, would it be good if I call you to come help, uh, come to camp to check you over and make note of your details if you want to drop by when you're free? That would be great. Otherwise, I'll have to come back with a cat carrier. Not so great. I'll come by. I know the place. The cat slinks off. Do you know her, Kibbs? Kibbles emerges from his hiding place in a, in a tree. Yeah, I know her. Is she okay? Seems a bit unhappy. Oh, she's fine. She's just like you is all. Like me? What do you mean? You're the scientist. You work it out. Kibbles vanishes again. Was that the, uh, my predecessor? few days since Kibbles lent me his comics, although I devoured them on the first night. I've been so busy with work that I haven't had time to return to them return them yet. I'm dying to talk to him about them. Talk with him about them. So today I've cleared the decks enough to spend a couple hours with him. Waiting in our usual spot, then the nearby bush begins to rustle. Hi Kibbles, is you there? No answer. I brought your comic your I brought your comics back still nothing. I know he's there. He must be playing a game, so I decided to play along. Oh, what a shame Kibbles isn't here. I still wanted to ask him about Hungry Sparrow. He's so clever, he would know why Naika broke the mirror at the end. Kibbles falls out of the bushes. Obviously, she's just clumsy. Really? I figured it was a metaphor for her fractured self-image. A metaphor? Yes. Because her heart was broken by Ryoji fell when oh her heart was broken when Ryoji fell in battle. Oh, of course, that goes without saying. But I just feel like that interpretation is kind of tired. Really? What would your interpretation be then? I think it might be too complex for you. Let's talk about something else. All right, what did you want to talk about? I'm starving. There's no proper food around here. I eye the plump British long hair skeptically. Well, I've got a tin of tuna back at camp if you want it. I could easily 
No, that's not proper food. Gross. I'm talking about proper food. Chocolate. Crisp. Chocolate. Crisp. Pizza. Have you got any of those? No, Kibbles, I don't. But you know how to get them. What are you implying, Kibbles? I can't just walk into the mess tent and steal armfuls of food in the middle of the day. Exactly. Meet me outside the mess tent tonight at sundown. Bring a backpack and a torch. Oh, Kibbles, I don't like the sound of this. If you don't help me, I'll just have to do it myself. I shudder at the thought of Kibbles being let loose in the mess tent without supervision. Well, okay, Kibbles, I'll meet you. I'll meet you, but only if you promise to be super stealthy. My stealth abilities are second to none. I am a black belt in Kukate. Kukate. Okay. Okay. I really hope so, Kibbs. Because we're going to be have to be super ninjas tonight. Dank. Dank? I've come to the mess tent a little before sundown, hoping to apprehend Kibbles in case he tries to stealthily barge in without me. I finally spot him stalking in the distance, using his tail to brush away paw prints he's leaving behind. He's taking this so seriously, my heart sinks as I realize how disappointed it'll be when I explain that we can't actually rob the mess tent of all its treats. Hey, Kibbs. Senpai. Senpai. I have to restrain myself from doing an air grab. I just wanted to say it's an honor to raid alongside you tonight. Yes, well, about that, Kibbles. I promise I won't let you down. Oh no, why is he being so nice? Well, actually, I don't think this is such a good idea after all. What? What are you talking about? Well, I was thinking that maybe it would be a step too far to raid the mess tent for spoils. Are you joking? You've changed your mind? Do you think I'm not up to the task? Is that it? He looks so hurt, I feel really crummy. It's not you, Kibbles. I would gladly heat up a pizza and make a salad to go with it. But I don't think it's a good idea to take any more than that. Kibbles looks at me with disbelief. Did you just say the word salad? I did, I'm sorry. But I'm... But this is a really bad idea, Kibbles. Not only could it get me fired, but you could get sick if you ate lots of sugar and flour, and I don't want to be responsible for that. It seems I was wrong about you. I thought you were heroic. I thought you were cool. This really strikes uh, a nerve. I'm not sure what to do. I don't know whether to listen to my head or my heart. Oh, this is a hard one. Um, we're going to rate it. Fuck it. Got to live a little. Kibbles called me senpai. I cannot let that be for nothing. Kibbles, I am heroic. I am cool. Very cool. Let's raid. Kibbles does a little happy dance and fires invisible paw guns into the air. You're sure everyone's gone to bed? Yes, except Zane. He's doing his rounds. He's on the other side of the island right now, which gives us about 15 minutes. This is cool. Oh, this is so cool, like a proper real-life loot run. But you have to keep your voice down, Kibbs. The Marigolds are doing their cleaning rounds in that tent just over there. So stop talking, because now we have only 14 minutes and 32 seconds. Yeah. We've crept in the kitchen area, which is easy. Which is as easy as a whole thing this open plan. I make us I make a start by grabbing pizza from the freezer and putting it into a microwave to cook. Next I get the store cabinet keys from their usual place and on the hook next to the sink. The, sec secur the security is not exactly high tech. Doesn't need to be. We're on an island. We all get fed. Who would want to steal food? Uh, duh. My backpack is overspilling with loot, and I'm struggling to zip it up. Point taken, but this is different. This isn't real food. This is uh, the monthly treat ration. Monthly? What do you eat all day? Then what do you eat all day? Well, fish and vegetables, mostly. Wow. I'm so sorry to hear that, Sandra. What? Never mind. Hurry up, and we, we got 6 minutes and 47 seconds left. As if on cue, the microwave pings, I grab the hot boxes, and we're off. 
How much of the food do they take? So this is your place, huh? We're sitting on my bed, finishing the last of the pizza. Yep, this is my crib. Never say that word again. I cover my embarrass I cover my embarrassment by tipping the contents of my rucksack into the bed between Kibbles and me. His eyes widen at the sight of our plunder. Oh man, there's even more than I thought. He stuffs his mouth with marshmallows and jelly beans. There are little tears in it. There are little tears in his eyes. It's been so long. This is the best night of my life. Kibbles and I gorge ourselves on junk food until we barely move. We can barely move. Thank you for today, Sandra. I really needed this. I don't feel so good. Uh, uh oh. Did you eat too much? I clamber out of my tent, hoping the fresh air will stop me from feeling sick. By the time I return to my tent, Kibbles is gone, and so it has the loot. I'm gonna rest. The issue of Kanishi Boy is super tattered. What has Kibbles been doing with it? Using it as his scratching post? I grab the mini hot iron and some sticky tape. And get to work on kneading it. I iron each page flat, folding the bent over corners, lining up the tears and patching them. I work slowly and meticulously. It's surprisingly therapeutic. After an hour, I sit back and admire my work. I'm quite proud of the end result. Not quite good as new, but definitely caref carefully pre-loved. I reread the issue delicately, appreciating every flaw. I think I shall rename this one King Kin Titsugi Boy. That was an interesting rest. We'll do another romance. Romance! Okay. Meow. I haven't seen Kibbles since our pizza party the other night. I wanna make sure he didn't overdo it once I left my once he left my tent. I approached the clearing near the bushes he likes to hide in. Kibbles, are you there? No answer. Kibbles? The bush sneezes. If I know you're there in there, Kibbles, you just sneezed. Still no answer. Kibbles, if you don't come out, I'm coming to get you. Kibbles lazily rolls out of the bushes. Oh, hi, Sandra. I didn't hear you coming. Kibbles, are you avoiding me? No. I've just been really busy. I pull a sticky sweet wrapper out of his long fur. Yes, I can see that. Is everything okay? I've been worried about you. You left so quickly the other night. Well, I figured the night was over. With you about to lose your guts outside. Then you'll be pleased to know that I was not, in fact, sick. I did feel terrible all night, though. What were we thinking? What were you thinking, I mean? I happen to know my limits. Except that you were sick on the way home, weren't you? How did you know about that? I didn't until just now. It was worth it. We should do that again. Not with me, you won't. So, what's been keeping you away? I've been working on my project. Project? What's that? Just my latest comic. Comic? You made one? Yeah. I've been working on it for ages. You're the first person I've told about it. Well, I'm honored. Tell me more. What's it about? Can I see it? It's about lots of stuff. You can have it, actually. Really? Kibbles hands me a stack of papers covered with crude markings held together with tape and staples. Oh, it's nice. It's just a first draft. It'll be worth loads to the right collector. Yeah, the artwork is quite avant-garde. I was worried that, a, uh, that being a cat would limit my artistic ability, but obviously I'm a savant. Oh yeah, for sure, and well, it has a unique smell, doesn't it? Yeah, it's hard to get the, it's hard to get pins and paint out here. I, I had to get pretty creative. Something tells me I'd rather not know too much about how his creative techniques. Ooh. Thank you for thank you for this kibbles. I'll read it as soon as I get back to base. Yeah, well, it's pretty complex. You might not get everything your first read through. Look at this. I look at the scratch, scratchings, paw prints, and splatters that keep up the page, 
that make up the pages of, of this rare first edition. No doubt. Maybe once I've read it, we can go through it together? Yeah, okay. You'll probably need my, you'll probably need my help. Right, I'll go make a start then. Thanks again, Kibbles. That's really sweet. Ugh, a manga made of cat turds. I got another recon. Hooray! Okay. We're starting to kind of finish these. That's good. Might be worth taking a closer look at the comic Kibbles made. All right. I don't know how that's recon, though. I'm laying in my tent, looking at the comic Kibbles made. It's really heartwarming. It's a really heartwarming thing. He put a lot of work into it. As I'm looking, I notice something behind some of the colors. It looks like Kibbles might have painted over something he found. I can just make out a signature in the lower right corner. The more I squint, the more I believe prof it's Professor Pauper's. I wonder what this used to be. I suppose it'd be possible to clean off the paint and see what's underneath, but I can't bring myself to do that. Maybe there's something in the lab that I might use uh, uh, to see without destroying the artwork. Aha! Arrive at the lab just after dark, where I'm guaranteed to have this place to myself. There's a portable x-ray machine in the back. We use it to examine bones of the cats after cleaning their diet, changing their diet. This is a light box attached to it, so we can see the x-rays properly. It's a, it's this piece of equipment that I'm hoping will reveal the secrets under Kibble's art, work of art. I'll lay out the comic on top of the light box and see the image quite clearly under the paint. It's a letter. Dear Jonathan, firstly I would like to wish yourself and Martha a happy new year. I understand your concerns. The recent closure of our account at your cat farm may indeed negatively impact your business. I can assure you this decision was not taken lightly. I would like to take the time to personally thank you and your family for your help providing us with cats, with cats over the years. From your last letter, it's clear that you don't fully understand the reasoning the, tri uh, the traditional methods of farming cats have, as you pointed out, been perfectly as you pointed out been perfectly acceptable for many years however recently advances recent advances in technology that our team have employed mean that we are able to produce cats on a far greater scale what and much more quickly than using the traditional methods our offshore facility can produce 100 cats in the time it would take you to rear 10 i would However, I'd like to repeat our offer of a job in the offshore nursery. Your family has been an asset to the company for many years, and we would like to show you our loyalty and appreciation. Do you, please do consider this offer seriously. Warm wishes and season's greetings from Professor Popper and team. Offshore cat breeding facility? We have an island overrun with cats right here. Why would we need... Ah, uh, think about it. Before I can even form a question in my mind, I know what the answer is. The island is the offshore facility. Professor Popper was obviously keeping it well under wraps. I look at Kibble's sweet picture and wonder how on earth he had this letter in his possession. Slowly, another thought begins to force its way into my consciousness. What if Jonathan and Martha accept... Ch hold on. Jonathan and Martha. Wayne. Ah, that's, that's cute accepted the offer that was made to them and came to the work on the island what if they were brought here brought their young son with them would this be kibble's parents i decided to respect kibble's privacy and keep this information to myself <laughs> oh see yeah uh, uh, i see what they're doing here he may not remember any of this and i don't want to distress him Let's romance kibbles. I'm sitting outside my tent, trying to do my best to make sense of Kimmel's, Kibble's comic. I desperately, I'm desperately hoping for something, anything that I understand enough to talk to him about. It's no use. Just as I'm giving up, I see Kibbles approaching from the forest. Kibbles, what are you doing here? I figured I'd have, I figured you'd have finished my comic by now, and you'd be ready to go through it with me. 
Oh yeah, sure, it was complicated like you said. I knew you wouldn't get it. Okay, I'll be honest, I didn't really understand very much at all. Let's start at the beginning then, shall we? Kibble sits down next to me and flips the comic open the first page. It's semi-autobiographical. Bi whatever that word is. My, my memoirs, if you will. From what I can remember, anyway, this page is about my parents. Kibble points to a pair of red paw prints. This is my earliest memory, my mom and dad sitting together while I played in the garden. He turns the page. This one has just one red paw. Money was tight, so mom worked on a lot of overtime. It was just me and dad most of the time. The next bit is about when I started high school. The page is chaotic. Bright smudges and scratches cover the, every inch. I really didn't fit in at high school. Tibbles gestures the page with a big scratch from top to bottom. This is the day where Troy started pushing me around. Look at this bit. A thick black substance covers the paper. I'm worried about what it might signify. This is my happiest memory, sitting alone by myself, in my room, reading comics. Tibbles flips to a more colorful page. This is when Dad started talking to me, uh, taking me to the comic store after school. It was like a whole new world for me. I've lost interest in the commercial stuff. It started to feel lamestream to me. I discovered manga, and it was much more my level. Way more intellectual. Kibbles turns page after page, explaining the significance of the manga he's, uh, the manga he's read and how they shaped him and helped him escape from his problems. Kibbles, I think this is great. The way you're opening up to me, it's a real privilege, I suppose. I've thought about this lots. Thought about it lots, and I wondered if I should ask. Ask what? Were you originally human? I mean, were you catified? Uh, he lowered the comic and looked, is looking at me with an expression of incredulity? Incredulity? I, I can't believe you just asked me that. I'm sorry, you don't have to answer. Are you actually joking? This whole comic is about my transition and stuff. What were you reading? If I wasn't originally human, how could I have a manga collection that would make any otaku proud? How would I be able to read even? How would I be able to read even? Yes, yes, of course I knew. I mean, I just mean I was asking more about how it happened. How, when, where, that stuff. He's fixed his eyes back on the page. I can't tell you. Too soon? Well, obviously not. We're looking at my entire existence here. I feel a little foolish. I just can't remember. Only bits. But it keeps getting less like it's fading in the sun. I feel his frustration and direct this back to the safety of reading. <sighs> it's okay. This is great. The doc it documents everything. Finally, he turns to the last spread, the one I'd been avoiding as the pages were stuck together. He pries them apart carefully as not to tear anything. It's a type of collage. He's used bits of chewed up plants to stick down various objects. Amongst the colorful markings, there's a panel from my copy of Kanashi Boy. Some sweet wrappers and in the center, the, unremar the unremarkable pebble, the one that Gat Kibbles claimed he was looking for the first night we met in the clearing. It has a blue and green paw print on it. Kibbles, this is beautiful. The page is about you. Me? Yeah, well, us. Us? What about us? You and me, our story. You wrote a story about us? No, the story that we are, that is, I want... Ugh! Take your time, Kibbles. Count to ten. Use your words. I'm not a kid. Don't patronize me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I was just trying to help. It's just confusing. I don't know what to say. Because I don't know what I feel. About what? About this! Kibbles angrily jabs the comic with his claw until he hooks the paper and he can't unstick himself. 
Uh, do you need help, or I really don't want to be patron patronizing? Gibbles finally tears his paw free and looks directly in the eye and blurts out one word. LOVE! I'm not sure I even fully heard him correctly, but I fri I'm frightened to ask him to repeat himself, so I take a punt. L love Maybe? Gibbles? I may be a very clever scientist, but I can't read minds. You're going to have to tell me what you, what it is you're trying to say. Maybe I have love feelings possibly for you, I think. Oh? I, we're doing this. We're doing, we're going, we're going balls deep on this one. I have love feelings for you too. Well, that's good. Is it? Yes, because maybe I might have love feelings possibly for you too. For you, I think too. You, you might? I do. Meow. Yes, I do, definitely, I think. Kibbles looks at me like, uh, like he doesn't quite know what to do next, so I bend down and we share an affectionate, affectionate nuzzle. He purrs loudly and then bites my arm and runs away. Like a cat. Ow! What do you think you're going off to? And I chase him through the forest. Kibbles and me are thing now. Now let me see. Is that everything I need? I prefer my mom's recipe. Nana's original granola. Huh, amended by mum. Large da -da -da, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, walnuts, peanuts, whatever, da -da -da -da, honey, coconut. Food. Oh wait, did I forget to order the coconut? rummage about the supply box and arrived this morning until my hands f Ugh, find the bag they were searching for. Phew! Coconut shavings are a necessity. Wait, even if I had forgotten them, I'm on an island with abundance of fresh coconuts. Still getting used to the island life. I set in the oven for 150 and leave it to heat up while I measure out the rolled oats. I have quadrupled the quantities so that hopefully it will last the whole summer. At least vast, com uh, at least it seems vast compared to how much I make at home. But it would be disastrous if I ran out. Homemade granola is an absolute essential. I mix the dry ingredients: oats, nuts, seeds, and spices together in a large bowl, and then add the wet honey and sunflower oil to form a golden moist moist consistency I've actually added a splash more than I more oil than suggested the mixture was feeling a bit drier than usual next I spread it evenly on a baking tray lined with parchment partially to save the washing up and rack it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes checking often because the seeds tend to burn quicker than I expected I, the smell always drives me crazy. Toasty, warm, homey. I miss my mom. Once done, I add the fruit as it, as it dries and cools and put into several large glass storage jars, being sure to stuff fistfuls into my mouth as I do. Nom, 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 nom. All right, it's time to research. It's time to check on Muffin. Let's check on Muffin. I arrived at the lab at the usual time and I walked through the door. The professor is standing right in front of me while, with a distant turning smile on his face. Ah, oh, Sandra, perfect timing. Uh, morning, Professor. Have you seen Mc, uh, I keep wanting to call him Mick Muffin. Have you seen Muffin today? I haven't. Why do you ask? See for yourself. Step aside and enter the tent immediately to see what he's referring to. Muffin is bounding and scurrying at breathtaking speed, sending everything in her path flying. <laughs> Crikey, Professor, what on earth has gotten into her? <laughs> the cat is flying. Some time ago, we tried to test a new sample on her, but there was no response at the time. I expect that this is just a much delayed reaction to that sample. She's like a hyper kitten. Indeed, I have an assignment for you today. You want me to catch her, don't you, sir? 
Absolutely. You must re retrieve some samples for analysis. Skin, hair, and saliva. Right. Okay. Professor chuckles to himself and wanders out of the lab. He's right to laugh. This isn't going to be easy. Uh, Muffin is bouncing all over the place. I stumble around f trying to catch her, but she's too fast. I think I think I have to. I'll have to think this through strategically. We lure her with food. I try the one thing that always works with Muffin. Food. I stand waiting with a handful of treats. Come on, Muffin. I got your favorite. Muffin stops in her tracks and fixes her huge pupils on the food. She's suspicious, but I can't. She can't resist. She's tented. She tentatively approaches. Suddenly, she leaps forward. I suppose she thinks she can grab the food and run back before I can catch her. She thinks wrong. After a brief tussle, I have her in my arms, and, and soon she resigns herself to her fate. I give her some treats and she starts purring. I collect the samples with little fuss from her and replace her in the crate. I'm prepping the catalog, uh, cataloging of samples when I notice something particular. The hair sample looks brittle, like it could turn to ash in my hand. I glance up at Muffin, and she's sleeping in a natural starf in an, in an unnatural starfish position, as though she conked out mid leap makes me feel uneasy. I go and give her a gentle stroke. She seems perfectly fine and relaxed, but I can't help but feeling she seems older than before. I think she's getting par I think I'm getting paranoid. Did we just like make the kitty get older? I'm ready. developed a habit of getting up early and writing for 30 minutes each morning before I begin my day. I'm often so tired at the end of the day that I just want to fall into bed. But my journal gets neglected. And my journal gets neglected. Also, I like the way it grounds me before this strange island sucks me into adventure, into the adventure of a new day. This morning, my concentration is being broken by a very odd noise and I suddenly realize it's the sound of someone trying to knock on my tent flap. Hello? Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. I recognize the voice belonging to Mr. Marigold, the island's caretaker. Oh, good morning, Mr. Marigold. I spring up to meet him. Can I help you? I would invite you in, but I indicate the chaos of my tent, my tiny tent. Barely room to swing a cat, I know. I laugh at his joke, but notice the deadpan expression and realize he's serious. I quickly move on, stepping outside. Is there something I can help you with? I hope so. And that would be... Miss Marigold is taken to her bed, proper sick, she is. So the boss said I should ask you to fill in for her today, if that is alright. I know the professor well enough by now to understand that I don't actually have a choice. I am filling in for Miss Marigold today, whether it's alright or not, with me or not. Actually, I'm quite intrigued. Great. I mean, I'm sorry to hear that your wife's poorly. Nothing serious, I hope, but I'm happy to spend some time with you, Miss Marigold. Well, best making an early start, then. You get your shoes on and I'll meet you at the jetty. Before I can say another word, he's disappeared off towards the water. I quickly put my journal back in its hidey hole and grab my backpack with the field kit in it before stuff, uh, stuffing my feet into my trainers. When I arrive at the jetty, I can see that Mr. Marigold's already started work mending the ra wooden rail where a couple of posts were damaged in a recent storm. Can I? How can I help? Just pass me those pins as I go along need to reinforce this and uh, and then recoat it with a preservative I'm a bit disappointed mm, just so you know I can use a hammer too if you have a spare we could get this mended much quicker with the two of us working on it there's no rush 
Oh, no, I suppose not. You're here with me for the whole day anyway. Oh, I didn't mean that. Actually, I'm pleased to, for the opportunity to break out of a break out a bit. I try something different. Bored of this place already? He squints sideways at me. No, not at all. There's just so much going on here. I haven't even begun to uncover half of this island has what this island has to offer. I'm sure. I just meant it's nice to have the chance to get to know someone new. Company is in short supply here. Human company. He mumbles it ha uh, half under his breath. So I'm not certain he even said it. I beg your pardon? You seem to be getting on with the cats though, huh? Oh yes. I'm spoiled for choice with feline friends. Be careful with that. I stop and look at him. He holds his gaze. What do you mean? Be careful with those pins. You're going to have... Oh, you're going to have them over the edge in, in a minute. I look down to see that I'm not paying attention. I have kicked the box perilously close to the edge of the jetty. Closer to the edge than you thought? Get the feeling we're not just talking about the box of nails. Yes, I wasn't paying attention. Looking in the wrong direction. That's when we miss the things right under our nose that could cause problems. Mr. Marigold? We stopped what we're doing and stand, are standing up now, looking directly into each other's eyes. We're having a moment. Do you know something I ought to know? Such as? Well, obviously, I don't know. I know you're an inquisitive little blighter. You've been watching me, Mr. Marigold? Keeping an eye might be more an accurate way of putting it. Like, Mr. Marigold looks like what I'd believe Batman would look like as an, as an old man. Like Bruce Wayne. He kind of looks like an old Bruce Wayne. Well, thank you, I think. You're welcome. But I won't be so quick to trust people if I were you. You don't know me or my intentions. He suddenly lets out a roar of laughter and gets back to work. I have a fling you're one of the good guys, Mr. Marigold. Call me Mason. Land and pins, and we say no more. But as we go over a conversation in my head, as I go over the conversation in my head, I realize those words before, or some very, some very like them, the nameless message on my catalog. Be careful who you trust. And it hits me. Ha ha! Mr. Marigold is my messenger. Oh, we solved, we solved the a mystery. I've come to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning I noticed another change in my appearance. Oh, we're doing this again. Okay. We've read this like six times, three times already. Vertical eye slits. I can't risk anyone seeing me like this. Okay. Sometime later, looking around, I don't remember ever being happier. I'm laying here in the forest with Kibbles reading my new edition of Kanishi Boy. Are you ever going to tell... Oh, yep, we're a kitty now, see? Big white kitty. Are you ever going to tell me how you managed to get a hold of those books? Yeah, I could. Really? Finally? But then I'd have to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> we're interrupted by a familiar sound of a fairy arriving at the pier. It seems my replacement has already arrived. That must be the new research assistant. You want to go and annoy them? Kibbles never gets tired of being Kibbles. No, you go if you like. I'm going to have to have a nap in a minute. Yeah, me too. It's hard work, all this reading. There was a time when I would have thought he was being ridiculous, but these days I have to agree. It's the pages. Turning pages is surprisingly taxing with pause. I feel so lucky that that's the only thing I have to complain about. My life is really charmed. I know now that I've made the right decision it used to worry me. I felt guilty about giving up on my work on the antidote. I resisted the urge to join Kibbles and the rest of the gang for as long as possible. But I think a, a part of me always knew I would give in eventually. Now I have no regrets. None of the other cats blame me. They're happy for Kibbs and I. 
We're one big family. Wanna go cliff hopping later? After a sleep, Obs. I'm happy to do whatever you want, Kibbs. Really? Of course. Okay, give me give me a making biscuits message while I fall asleep, will ya? Roll over and open one eye. See Kibbles has the broadest grin on his face. I swish him with my tail and drift off to sleep off to a bliss blissful sleep. That ended happy. So, not bad. And we got Kibbles to love us.